Canadian officials have declared the end of an economic crisis created by protesters who blocked a vital U.S.-Canada border crossing for multiple days. Police released a statement this morning saying several people protesting against vaccine mandates at a key trade corridor were arrested over the weekend. Arrests and vehicle seizures continue through Sunday. An increasing number of protesters exited the six-day-long demonstration at the Ambassador Bridge after a judge granted an injunction ordering them to leave the area by Friday. Joining us now is CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga. Hi there, Nicole. So the mayor of Windsor says that the crisis of the Block Bridge is over. What can you tell us? Lana, good to be with you. Police moved in to clear and arrest the remaining protesters near that busy U.S.-Canadian border crossing today, trying to put a full stop to the demonstration against COVID-19 restrictions that has taken a serious toll on the economy for both Canada and the United States. Law enforcement refraining from issuing a larger crackdown on the protest in Canada's capital. But Windsor police have been making arrests and towing vehicles beginning early this morning, particularly those blocking Ambassador Bridge. Only a few Few protesters lingering uh, last night at that port of entry after pickup trucks and other vehicles blocked the crossing that accounts for, get this, a quarter of all U.S. Canadian trade. Now, law enforcement says just yesterday, 4,000 demonstrators gathered in the center of Ottawa. Lots of music, people milling about amid the anti vaccine encampments that popped up in late January. Lana, I even spoke to an organizer in the United States that told me some of the same protesters we saw here in Washington, D.C. last month month during anti-vaccine mandate demonstrations outside the U.S. Capitol made their way to Ottawa in solidarity. This after Canadian and federal law enforcement formed a command center in Ottawa. For days, frustrated residents demanded more from the police, even calling directly on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to stop the weeks-long protests. For his part, Trudeau has resisted calls to use the Canadian military. That's something Ontario's attorney general would need to greenlight. But the prime minister has said that all of the options are on the table. Of course, there is concern that any escalation, any further escalation of force on the part of the police could spark violence among uh, what have largely been peaceful, albeit economically damaging, demonstrations. You know, Nicole, when you say that it's a quarter of all of the trade between the U.S. and Canada, uh, we have been hearing about how how vital this passageway has been. How significant then has the economic impact been in both the U.S. and Canada? Yeah, Lana, it's such an important point because this has taken quite a toll on the Canadian and U.S. economy, particularly in border states, places like Michigan, North Dakota, Montana. In particular, the automotive plants have grounded almost to a halt. Uh, you know, plants like Ford, GM, Honda, Toyota, they've had to scale back production or stop production altogether at several factories in Michigan and Ontario. And this amid other blows to that industry, like semiconductor shortages and supply chain woes that we've been hearing hearing about, the United States and Canada exchange nearly 140 million in vehicles and parts on the daily. So reopening the bridge is a big priority. The mayor of Windsor says that that border crossing will officially reopen, quote, when it's safe to do so. Tell us, Nicole, how is law enforcement making that determination? And do you know anything more about that timeline? Yeah, Lana, you did see that tweet today that border crossings will reopen when it's safe to do so. And uh, the mayor there saying he defers to police and border agencies to make that determination. We've, of course, asked U.S. Customs and Border Protection, as well as the White House, about the timeline here. They've told us they're closely monitoring the situation, uh, which has resulted in phone calls between both Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas with their Canadian counterparts. It's not immediately clear when the bridge will open, but Windsor's mayor says he hopes it's Sunday today. Police have cleared the entire Windsor protest zone and continue to push back on those attempting to block the road leading to the Ambassador Bridge. So there is an indication on the ground of a potential reopening very soon. Well, several protesters reportedly still remain, but as we know, officials say that the crisis is over. So what's next for the protesters? Should we expect the demonstration to continue or move to other areas?
Yeah, although police cleared protester encampments in Windsor, some of the demonstrators have stayed in the area. They vowed to move protests elsewhere from Ambassador Bridge. Police have not yet reopened some of the nearby streets. We should point out, of course, these protests have, as you point out, echoed across the globe with similar demonstrations in France, New Zealand, Australia, and the Netherlands. In fact, some of the largest crowds assembled have assembled outside New Zealand's parliament building in Wellington, where lawmakers and police attempted to scatter crowds by turning on the sprinkler system, blasting music like the Macarena, Baby Shark, and Frozen's Let It Go, though that seems to have just prompted dancing so far. But yeah, we have seen this take the globe by storm. It's interesting how, uh, how everybody knows the lyrics to the Macarena. Uh, Nicole, so speaking of the movement of it, the Department of Homeland Security here in the U.S. has warned of a similar truck convoy trying to crash the Super Bowl today. Carter Evans says that the security is really tight there. What are you hearing? Yeah, Carter's exactly right. And ahead of the Super Bowl, Lana, DHS surged additional staff to its incident command post in Los Angeles, nearby SoFi Stadium. Already, though, more than 500 federal law enforcement were in place there, providing everything from Black Hawk helicopters to U.S. Coast Guard maritime patrols. Uh, so that's a heavily secure area. That intense law enforcement presence appears to have deterred any protesters so far online. We've seen groups on Facebook, Telegram, Clubhouse distancing from that recently announced convoy demonstration demonstrations to shut down the 2022 Super Bowl and instead announcing plans to gather next month, perhaps at Coachella, the California Music Festival slated to take place on March 5th. But certainly, analysts at the Department of Homeland Security tell me they're still on the lookout for signs of gatherings, though they say there's really no indication right now of anything transpiring outside of First Amendment protected activity. That said, if dozens or even hundreds of trucks were to converge on a major metropolitan city in the U.S., as we've seen other places, Places, you know, the potential exists to severely disrupt transportation, government operations, commercial facilities, mm -hmm. even emergency services uh, through potential gridlock and counter protests. So that remains a concern. So, Nicole, one last question for you about that, because we understand that a lot of the, the social media posts that we're seeing um, aren't actually real. What more can you tell us about the spammers behind the, the fake accounts? Well, as the trucker convoy gained traction, officials at Facebook witnessed growth hacking routinely seen around hot-button issues of national security, Lana. In fact, one spokesperson for Facebook told me it's very typical for any crisis situation, be it a natural disaster, protest, election around the world, you know, to attract spammers. They create these fake accounts online using buzzwords, in this case, trucker convoy, that are designed to drive people offline or to websites filled with ads so they can monetize or sell merchandise. Now, according to Facebook, these are really low-level cottage industry spammers. Uh, these are not like influence campaigns that are foreign-backed, and they're in, you know, places like France, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Romania. They're not, you know, sophisticated operations of interference here. But, you know, in addition to some of these bot-driven sites, several Facebook groups promoting the trucker convoy have been removed after violating the platform's QAnon policies and community standards. Facebook saying it has teams monitor monitoring for that kind of content this weekend, and the platform is in touch with local, state, and federal law enforcement that is tasked with securing the Super Bowl. So that continues to be an ongoing uh, effort just to monitor that, Lana. All right, Nicole, thank you. Thank you.